The history of the Jews in Estonia starts with individual reports of Jews in what is now Estonia from as early as the 14th century. However, the process of permanent Jewish settlement in Estonia began in the 19th century, especially after they were granted the official right to enter the region by a statute of Russian Tsar Alexander II in 1865. This allowed the so-called Jewish Nicholas soldiers, often former Cantonists and their descendants, first guild merchants, artisans, and Jews with higher education to settle in Estonia and other parts of the Russian Empire outside their pale of settlement. The Nicholas soldiers and their descendants, and artisans were, basically, the ones who founded the first Jewish congregations in Estonia. The Tallinn Congregation, the largest in Estonia, was founded in 1830. The Tartu Congregation was established in 1866 when the first 50 families settled there. Synagogues were built, the largest of which were constructed in Tallinn in 1883 and Tartu in 1901. Both of these were subsequently destroyed by fire in World War II. The Jewish population spread to other Estonian cities where houses of prayer at Valga, Parnu and Vilhandi were erected and cemeteries were established. Schools were opened to teach Talmud, and elementary schools were organized in Tallinn in the 1880s. The majority of the Jewish population at that time consisted of small tradesmen and artisans, very few knew science, hence Jewish cultural life lagged. This began to change at the end of the 19th century when several Jews entered the University of Tartu and later contributed significantly to enliven Jewish culture and education. 1917 even saw the founding of the Jewish Drama Club in Tartu. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish autonomy in independent Estonia. Approximately 200 Jews fought in combat in the Estonian War of Independence 1918 for the creation of the Republic of Estonia. Seventy of these fighters were volunteers. The creation of the Republic of Estonia in 1918 marked the beginning of a new era in the life of the Jews. From the very first days of her existence as a state, Estonia showed tolerance towards all ethnic and religious minorities. This set the stage for energetic growth in the political and cultural activities of Jewish society. Between 11 and 16 May 1919, the first Estonian Congress of Jewish Congregations was convened to discuss the new circumstances Jewish life was confronting. This is where the ideas of cultural autonomy and a Jewish gymnasium secondary school in Tallinn were born. Jewish societies and associations began to grow in numbers. The largest of these new societies was the H. N. Bialik Literature and Drama Society in Tallinn founded in 1918. Societies and clubs were established in Vilhandi, Narva, and elsewhere. 1920s In 1920, the Maccabi Sports Society was founded and became well known for its endeavors to encourage sports among Jews. Jews also took an active part in sporting events in Estonia and abroad. Sarah Teitelbaum was a 17-time champion in Estonian athletics and established no fewer than 28 records. In the 1930s there were about 100 Jews studying at the University of Tartu, 44 studied jurisprudence and 18 medicine. In 1934, a chair was established in the School of Philosophy for the study of Judaica. There were five Jewish student societies in Tartu Academic Society, the Women's Student Society Hasfiro, the Corporation Limuvia, the Society Hasmania and the Endowment for Jewish Students. All of these had their own libraries and played important roles in Jewish culture and social life. Political organizations such as Zionist youth organizations Hashomer Hazer and Beitar were also established. Many Jewish youth traveled to Palestine to establish the Jewish state. The kibbutzim of Kfar Bloom and Ein Gev were set up in part by Estonian Jews. On 12 February 1925, the Estonian government passed a law on the cultural autonomy of minorities. The Jewish community quickly prepared its application for cultural autonomy. Statistics on Jewish citizens were compiled. They totaled 3,045, fulfilling the minimum requirement of 3,000 for cultural autonomy. In June 1926 the Jewish Cultural Council was elected and Jewish cultural autonomy declared. The administrative organ of this autonomy was the Board of Jewish Culture, headed by Hirsch Eisenstadt until it was disbanded following the Soviet occupation of Estonia in 1940. 
When German troops occupied Estonia in 1941, Eisenstadt evacuated to Russia. He returned to Estonia when the Germans had left, but was arrested by the Soviet authorities in 1949. The cultural autonomy of minority peoples is an exceptional phenomenon in European cultural history. Therefore, Jewish cultural autonomy was of great interest to the global Jewish community. The Jewish National Endowment Karen Kajimit presented the Estonian government with a certificate of gratitude for this achievement. This cultural autonomy allowed full control of education by the community. From 1926, Hebrew began to replace Russian in the Jewish public school in Tallinn, while in 1928 a rival Yiddish language school was founded. From the very first days of her existence as a state, Estonia showed her tolerance towards all the peoples inhabiting her territories. In 1925, the Act of Cultural Autonomy for Ethnic Minorities was enacted in Estonia, giving minority groups consisting of at least 3,000 individuals the right to self-determination in cultural matters. Financial support was provided by the state. Thus, in 1926, Jewish cultural autonomy was declared. For its tolerant policy towards Jews, a page was dedicated to the Republic of Estonia in the Golden Book of Jerusalem in 1927. 1930s In 1934, there were 4,381 Jews living in Estonia 0.4% of the population, 2,203 Jews lived in Tallinn. Other cities of residence included Tartu 920, Valga 262, Parnu 248, Narva 188 and Vilhandi 1688 Jews contributed to the national economy, 31% in commerce, 24% in services, 14.5% as artisans, and 14% as laborers. There were also large businesses, the leather factory Uzvansky and Sons in Tartu, the Ginevkara's candy factory in Tallinn, Furrier's Ratner and Hof, and forest improvement companies such as Sains and Judaniks. There was a society for tradesmen and industrialists. Tallinn and Tartu boasted Jewish cooperative banks. Only 9.5% of the Jewish population worked freelance. Most of these were physicians, over 80 in all there was also a society for Jewish physicians. In addition there were 16 pharmacists and 4 veterinarians. 11% of the Jewish population had received higher education, 37% secondary education and 33% elementary education, 18% had only received education at home. The Jewish community established its own social welfare system. The Jewish Goodwill Society of the Tallinn Congregation made it their business to oversee and execute the ambitions of this system. The rabbi of Tallinn at that time was Dr. Gomer. In 1941 during the German occupation he was ruthlessly harassed and finally murdered. In Tartu the Jewish Assistance Union was active, and welfare units were set up in Narva, Valga and Parnu. In 1933 the influence of National Socialism on Baltic Germans began to be a concern. Nazism was outlawed as a movement contrary to social order, the German Cultural Council was disbanded, and the National Socialist Victor von Mullen, the elected member of the Baltic German Party, was forced to resign from the Rigikogu. All materials ridiculing Jews, including the National Socialist magazine, Valvior, Guard, were banned by order of the state elder Constantine Patz as materials inciting hatred. In the same year a faculty of Jewish studies was established at Tartu University. Lazar Gulkowicz, a former professor at Leipzig University was appointed the university's first professor and chair of Jewish studies and began teaching in 1934. In 1936, the British-based Jewish newspaper The Jewish Chronicle reported after a visit to Tallinn by one of its journalists. Estonia is the only country in Eastern Europe where neither the government nor the people practice any discrimination against Jews and where Jews are left in peace. The cultural autonomy granted to Estonian Jews ten years ago still holds good, and Jews are allowed to lead a free and unmolested life and fashion it in accord with their national and cultural principles. 
In February 1937, as antisemitism was growing elsewhere in Europe, the vice president of the Jewish community Heinrich Gutkin was appointed by presidential decree to the Estonian upper parliamentary chamber, the Reginokogu. Throughout the 1930s, Zionist youth movements were active, with pioneer training being offered on Estonian farms by Hehelutz, while the leading cultural institute Bialik Ferran performed plays and its choir toured and performed on radio. World War II The life of the small Jewish community in Estonia was disrupted in 1940 with the Soviet occupation of Estonia. Cultural autonomy together with all its institutions was liquidated in July 1940. In July and August of the same year all organizations, associations, societies and corporations were closed. The Jews' businesses were nationalized. A relatively large number of Jews 350 to 450, about 10% of the total Jewish population were deported into prison camps in Russia by the Soviet authorities on 14 June 1941, where most perished. The Holocaust More than 75% of Estonia's Jewish community, aware of the fate that otherwise awaited them, managed to escape to the Soviet Union. Virtually all the remainder, between 950 and 1000 men, women and children, had been killed by the end of 1941. They included Estonia's only rabbi, the professor of Jewish studies at the University of Tartu, Jews who had left the Jewish community, the mentally disabled, and a number of veterans of the Estonian War of Independence. Fewer than a dozen Estonian Jews are known to have survived the war in Estonia. Round ups and killings of Jews began immediately following the arrival of the first German troops in 1941, who were closely followed by the extermination squad Sonderkommando 1A under Martin Sandberger, part of Einsatzgruppe A led by Walter Stolliker. Arrests and executions continued as the Germans, with the assistance of local collaborators, advanced through Estonia. Unlike German forces, Estonians seem to have supported the anti-Jewish actions on the political level, but not on a racial basis. The standard excuse used for the cleansing operations was arrest because of communist activity. This equation of Jews with communism evoked a positive Estonian response, and attempts were made by Estonian police to determine whether an arrested person indeed supported communism. Estonians often argued that their Jewish colleagues and friends were not communists and submitted proof of pro-Estonian conduct in the hope of being able to get them released. Anton Weiss went in his dissertation, "'Murder Without Hatred, Estonians, the Holocaust, and the Problem of Collaboration'," concluded on the basis of the reports of informers to the occupation authorities that Estonians in general did not believe in Nazi anti-Semitic propaganda and by majority maintained positive opinion about Jews. Estonia was declared Judenfrei quite early, at the one Sea Conference on 20 January 1942, as the Jewish population of Estonia was small, about 4,500, and the majority of it managed to escape to the Soviet Union before the Germans arrived. Virtually all the remainder 921 according to Martin Sandberger, 929 according to Yevgenia Gorin Lev and 963 according to Walter Stolliker were killed. The Nazi regime also established 22 concentration and labor camps in Estonia for foreign Jews, the largest being Vevera concentration camp. Several thousand foreign Jews were killed at the Kalevi Leva camp. An estimated 10,000 Jews were killed in Estonia after having been deported there from Eastern Europe. There were two Estonians who have been honored with the righteous among the nations, Uku Mesing and his wife Eha. Topic: <laughs> Soviet period. The four Estonians held most responsible for the murders at Kalevi Leva were accused at war crimes trials in 1961. Two were later executed, the others avoided sentencing by going into exile. About 1,500 Jews from Tallinn returned after the war's end, and by 1959 there were 3,714 Jews in the city. After the Six-Day War, 400 Jews from Tallinn immigrated to the state of Israel. From 1944 until 1988 the Estonian Jewish community had no organizations, associations, or clubs. <inaudible> Modern Estonia 
In March 1988, as the process towards regaining Estonia's independence was beginning, the Jewish Cultural Society was established in Tallinn. It was the first of its kind in the late Soviet Union. Unlike in other parts of the Soviet Union, there were no problems with registering either the society or its symbols. The society began by organizing concerts and lectures. Soon the question of founding a Jewish school arose. As a start, a Sunday school was established in 1989. The Tallinn Jewish Gymnasium on Karu Street was being used by a vocational school. In 1990, a Jewish school with grades 1 through 9 was established. Jewish culture clubs, which remained under the wing of the Cultural Society, were started in Tartu, Narva, and Kotla Jarv. Other organizations followed, the Sports Society Maccabi, the Society for the Garini Goodwill Endowment and the Jewish Veterans Union. Life returned to Jewish congregations. Courses in Hebrew were re-established. A relatively large library was opened with assistance from Israel and Jewish communities in other countries. The gamut of cultural activities kept on growing. The Jewish Cultural Society is a founding member of Eastima Ravust Uindis Union of the Peoples of Estonia, which was founded at the end of 1988. The restoration of Estonian independence in 1991 brought about numerous political, economic and social changes. The Jews living in Estonia could now defend their rights as a national minority. The Jewish community was officially recognized with the approval of its charter on of April 1992. Estonia resumed its traditional regard of its Jews with friendship and accommodation. In support of this a new Cultural Autonomy Act, based on the original 1925 law, was passed in Estonia in October 1993. This law grants minority communities, including Jewish, a legal guarantee to preserve their national identities. On 16 May 2007 a new synagogue was opened in Tallinn. It houses a sanctuary, mikveh and restaurant. Historical demographics Estonia always had a relatively small Jewish population. In contrast to many other European countries, Estonia's Jewish population peaked only after World War II, at almost 5,500 people in 1959. It then began a steady decline, with an especially sharp decline in the 1990s after the fall of communism as many Estonian Jews emigrated to other countries, especially to Israel and USA. Topic. Current demographics Total population 2007, 1900 Live births 2006, 12 Total deaths 2006, 51 Birth rate, 6.32 per 1,000 Death rate, 26.84 per 1,000 NGR, minus 2.05% per year Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. External links Berg, Aiki The Peculiarities of Jewish Settlement in Estonia. Geojournal 33.4, 465-470. Byrne, Ruth Bettina Collaboration with Nazi Germany in Eastern Europe, the case of the Estonian Security Police. Contemporary European History 10.2, 181-198. Sander, Gordon F. 2009. Estonia Lost and Found, The Rebirth of a Community, or, Mazel Tov Estonia. Retrieved 6 August 2011. Verzchik, Anna 1999. The Yiddish Language in Estonia, Past and Present. Journal of Baltic Studies 30.2, 117-128. Weiss Wendt, Anton The Soviet Occupation of Estonia in 1940-41 and the Jews. Holocaust and Genocide Studies 12.2, 308-325. The Jewish Community of Estonia Factsheet, Jews in Estonia Encyclopedia about Estonia, Ethnic Religious Minorities Estonian Jewish Museum Estonia article at the YIVO Encyclopedia of Jews in Eastern Europe